everyone, welcome back to our fabulous poetry workshop here, um, and Mr. Bubblywinks and I are here. It is officially spring, allergies are getting to me, but I did get to play with some fun makeup today. So uh, hopefully we can ignore the nasally sounding, um, it's just allergies. And we are so very near the end of NaNoWriMo that I just am so excited for today and to see everything that you guys are coming up with, um, to watch all of your completed projects start posting, and to be a part of this journey. So uh, today we're going to do something that I'm sure you guys expected much, much, much earlier in the month, but we are going to look at sonnets, and we're going to look at what defines a sonnet and what the difference between a Shakespearean sonnet is and what a different kind of sonnet is and how to write them all. So the very, very basics of a sonnet is that it is 14 lines um, and that it's a big idea, a big feeling, a big issue. So sometimes that's love, sometimes that's heartache, sometimes it's a problem that needs an actual solution. So that is the most basic version of a sonnet. A Shakespearean sonnet also has an iambic pentameter um, that is used in some or all of the 14 lines. And what iambic pentameter does is it basically emphasizes which syllables are supposed to be stressed and which are not. Um, and personally, that is the thing that always drives me away from sonnets because it's such a hard concept to explain. But once you get it, you get it. And I still haven't gotten it. Like I've been told that people get it and it clicks and that's beautiful. Um, but apparently I am just not one of them. The next thing that makes a Shakespearean sonnet a Shakespearean sonnet is that it has a final couplet. So the last two lines, lines 13 and 14, um, are a couplet that rhyme and they resolve the issue or come to a greater understanding about the problem or are like the aha. Um, for even more difficulty on top of what a sonnet is, you can also um, include a volta, which is like a shift, a tone, another aha moment, a revelation, um, and that is usually going to be somewhere between the 10th and the 14th line. And then, like I said, you would still use those last two lines to really emphasize what that change is. Um, you can also use the original rhyme scheme, which is A, B, A, B for your first stanza, C, D, C, D for your second, E, F, E, F for your third, and then G, G is your rhyming couplet in the end. Um, and the really, really tough thing about sonnets is that you're supposed to be trying to, to aim for 10 syllables per line. Um, and if you are working with that iambic pentameter, that can get really, really tricky because how do you get 10 syllables, but how do you focus on the stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, which isn't quite in that same rhythm that I just used, but it can get really tricky really fast. So some famous examples of sonnets include, of course, um, William Shakespeare's. This is a Shakespearean sonnet, and it is titled, My Mistress's Eyes Are Nothing Like the Sun. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, then her breasts are done. If her hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I've seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath of from what my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads the ground. And yet by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she bellied with false compare. <clears throat> I think that's a bad, bad copy. I feel like there are a couple of words there that were not the correct words. Um, but I'm not, I'm not a huge, like, pure Shakespearean poet. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments if you do. Another great example is this Elizabeth Bar Bar Browning. Um, and this is an example of a Italian sonnet, and it's How Do I Love Thee. 
How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and the breadth of height my soul can reach. When feelings out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need. By sun and candlelight, I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with passion put to use in my good old griefs and my childhood faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee after death. I don't think that one's entirely right either. Um, that's, that's really weird. Um, we're also going to look at Sonnet 75 from Edmund Spencer's Amoretti. Uh, this is a Spencerian sonnet. So if you are noticing, people are taking the idea of a sonnet and they're putting their own rules, their own spin on it. Um, but the one thing that remains the same is that there's a rhyme scheme that's pretty predictable. It's that A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. And um, there's also an emphasis on the rhythm. It's not always iambic pentameter, but there's always a distinct rhythm in these uh, sonnets. Also, the structure can vary. So, for example, in a Shakespearean sonnet, you have four uh, stanzas. In the one I just read, you have two stanzas. And in the one I'm about to read, you just have one. So this is Sonnet 75 um, from Edmund Spencer's Amoretti. Uh, one day I wrote her name upon the strand, but came the waves and washed it away. Again, I write it with a second hand, but come the tide and made the pains his prey. Vain man, she said, that dust a vain assay, a mortal thing to immortalize, for I myself shall like this to decay, and eke my name be wiped out likewise. Not so, quad I, let baser things devise. To dine and dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse, my virtues, rare shall eternize. And in the heavens write your glorious name. And where upon death shall the world subdue, our love shall live a life after new. And uh, we'll be right back with some more examples. And then the last sonnet we're going to look at is a modern sonnet by Billy Collins. All we need is 14 lines, well, 13 now. And after this one, just a dozen to launch the little ship on love's storm-tossed seas. Then... Only ten more left like rows of beans. How easily it goes unless you get Elizabethan and insist that iambic bongos must be played and rhythms positioned at the ends of lines, one for every station of the cross. But hang on here while we make the turn into the final six where all will be resolved where longing and heartache will find an end, and Laura will tell Petrarch to put down his pen, take off those crazy medieval tights, blow out the lights, and come at last to bed. So each of these was a take on a sonnet. It had <clears throat> a lot of different elements to it, and it allows you uh, a little bit of an example of the variety of sonnets. You can write a modern sonnet, you can write a sonnet explaining how to write a sonnet, you can write a Shakespearean sonnet, or you can create your own form of, of sonnet, which is really, really cool. Um, I especially love how in this Billy Collins one, we're basically taught the history of a sonnet, the reasons of a sonnet, like kind of how to write one, kind of how to read one, and that's really cool. And if you're really not sure like where to start in writing this, you can think of some themes that are really big and wide in your life. Like maybe you are a huge mental health advocate and that could be a theme for this poem. Maybe you are going through a loss that you are still processing yourself and you don't really know how to write about, but maybe writing it will help you that's a theme. Maybe you are in love. Maybe you are realizing that there's a problem in your daily life or in your community and your poem can help uh, suggest solutions. If you are hoping to play with iambic, iambic pentameter, sorry, like I said, these allergies are killing me, but I'm good. You can um, use 10 syllables per line 
And hopefully you can find other resources on the internet to help you uh, determine which syllables are supposed to be stressed and which are unstressed and how to tell the difference. Like I said, that still hasn't fully clicked for me, which is part of why we left this to the end of the month, but also part of why I figured you should have a, a stronger understanding of poetry before getting here. And the last thing to consider is if you're using such a basic rhyme scheme, which is basically writing in alternating couplets, um, and I'm not saying that's basic by any means, but it is a very common poetic structure, then you can also make lists of your rhymes before writing this poem and kind of deciding what kind of direction you want to go in. Um, is it going to be corny? Are they going to be uh, slant rhymes? Are they going to be funny? Is it going to be part of your storytelling? Is it going to be part of how you modernize your sonnet? Like, what kind of rhymes are you going to use? Um, and, and get an idea for those ahead of time to help make the writing easier. So there are, again, a billion types of sonnets. Um, I hope that you will leave yours in the comments below or add it to social media and tag me. Mr. Bubblywinks and I believe in you. We are so excited to see what you're up to. We are so proud of you for making it this far. And since we are at the end of the month, I want to go ahead and let you know that tomorrow will be our last poetry workshop. And of course, Sunday will be an episode of prompts because that is the routine that we've built here. And the month just happens to end on a Sunday. Also, I feel like you've got a pretty solid poetic foundation if you've made it all the way through this workshop. So having prompts for the last day of the month is really an awesome direction to let you just run with your inspirations and run with your new skills and really make a home for yourself in this big, wide, crazy, poetic world. Um, I believe in you. I'm so glad you made it this far. I'll see you again tomorrow, and I hope you're doing well. And don't worry, sonnets don't have to be scary. Okay, well, I'll be back tomorrow. Bye for now.